Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be doing a really quick art journal page and um, creating a paper quilt. So this is kind of inspired by my mum um, who is a quilter and she's been doing a whole heap of stuff and um, I just love how she puts her different pieces to get pieces of paper oh, fabric together sorry and one of her main inspirations is a quilting artist knitter called Kay Facet who has these amazing brightly colored highly patterned fabrics that he creates so I decided that I would try and replicate that and I had a whole pile of gel prints with all sorts of different bits and pieces in it and all sorts of different bits and color and I thought well why not have a go and glue them all together and I love how it turned out it's really really busy um, but it's a really great way to get a really interesting background as well one of the reasons this page um, or this technique works so well is all of these gel prints have been done on um, deli paper or like grease proof paper really thin tissue paper so when I'm gluing them down they're gluing down really really flat they're overlapping each other really really well and I'm not having to worry about little edges popping up and um, peeling off so you know with quite soft um, gel medium I can glue these down really really quickly if I'd used copy paper or printer paper to do this it would have been a little bit harder to glue them down and I would have run the risk of bits and pieces popping up again. Not a huge deal really, but um, can be frustrating. So uh, I would suggest if you've got access to tissue paper, even gift wrap paper, um, do a whole heap of gel printing on that and print them out. Now, if you really like this technique and you have got a whole heap of scrapbooking papers, break them out and tear them up into pieces and glue them down just need might need a little bit of a stronger adhesive to do it um, but it's just a really really fun thing to do I've chosen to tour my tour sorry tear my pieces into really random shapes but you could obviously um, find a quilting pattern that you love and replicate that using paper instead so you know, if you go to the internet and, and look up quilts, you can find a whole heap of patterns. I'm actually quite impressed because I've, I've started to learn some of the quilt pattern names because mum's been telling me them all. Um, but, and the, some of them are absolutely fabulous. But I'm, I'm, as you, if you follow this channel, not really a straight lines person. I do like my, my organic shapes somewhat. So that's what I'm doing. Around the outside of each shape that I've got here, I'm going in with a white pen and just doing little lines to mimic stitching. Really simple, <laughs> but it actually really ties. Really struggling my words today. It ties the piece together, um, and it's something that you could do in front of the TV. It's really mindless, but it's one of those little finishing details that just makes this look. Not like a torn heap of papers on the page, but you've done something deliberate to it. Um, obviously, depending on the colours that you have used on your page, you might choose to use a different colour for the stitching. So, you know, the white on most of these is, is showing up okay, um, but, you know, a black pen might be more appropriate. On this, uh, this page, I have actually used my biggest journal. This is the largest Dina Wakeley journal which is 11 by 14 inches, I think. It's huge. Um, I got it three years ago and I still haven't finished it because I, I do struggle working on such a big size. But this is a great um, activity to, to do in it, to um, fill up the journal. So I, I really enjoyed it and it gave me a real sense of accomplishment that I'd finished a double page in this journal. So once I've finished putting all the stitch marks in, I then had the huge dilemma of what am I going to do with it? I actually really like it just as it is, but I decided to write a quote over the top of it. And that's what I'm doing at the moment is actually going into Pinterest, I think, and finding a quote that I wanted to write over this page. So Pinterest is where I go to get a lot of my quotes um, and I just get on my computer 
get on my computer, get on my phone and type in some keywords that I think might be appropriate. And I think on this page, um, I chose something, I think the keywords might have been to do with um, broken or put together. Um, because this page really reminded me of um, the Japanese art of um, refixing pottery, where they, if a piece of pottery is um, broken, they repair it, but they repair it with gold, so the broken seam is still visible. And I just think it's beautiful because we're all broken in some way, and sometimes the broken parts are actually the most important parts of us because it shows what we have gone through, what we have. Um, put ourselves through how we've put ourselves back together again and you know it's really important to celebrate that so with my quote I'm writing it out using my paint pens and you can see I wrote it out really roughly to begin with you can barely see it on the page I can um, sort of see it obviously as I'm working but it's I write it out really roughly to begin with just to get an idea of the spacing. Now I was actually really struggling with my paint pens because it was getting to the end of it and it was um, dying something somewhat but it, it's still working. Once I have written out the quote and I'm happy with the spacing then I go back in and darken up the lines so and you know make some pieces thicker and some pieces finer I um, know what the spacing is like so if I need to widen something or make it fill in the space I can do that so you can see me changing over by a few different pens just to try and get it all working and then I had another pen dying so I've switched to another pen always important to have a good supply of pens that you can go back to so this is the thicker um, Posca paint pen which I really should have gone back to to begin with um, to write it out so the reason I write straight away with paint pen which is an acrylic paint is because I can wipe it off while it's still wet or um, to remove the image remove the paint sorry um, because the background, particularly in the way that I've applied it here, was um, sealed with gel medium, by putting acrylic paint over the top, it takes a little while to dry. And um, if I'd made a mistake or a spelling mistake or the, the spacing didn't wipe, um, wasn't right, I could wipe away what I'd written out and rewrite it once that area was dry again. The reason I don't tend to use pencil on my pages is because I'm very heavy handed and I dent my page so if I make a mistake and have to rub it out, one I'm never very good at rubbing it out completely and two there's usually the indentation in my page as well. So I find for me this is the cleanest way to do it. However, if you need to write out in pencil first do that or one of the other suggestions I have is if you've got a Stabilo All pencil which is a water soluble pencil you might like to write it out with that then you can go over with your acrylic pen and if you've got any of the Stabilo all pencil showing at the end once the acrylic paint is dry then you can just go over the top with a wet wipe and wipe it all away so there's lots of different ways to get around it so this is the final piece she is a beauty um, beautiful piece of broken pottery put back together by our own hands critical world judges her cracks while missing the beauty of how she made herself whole again so um, that sort of really reflects that uh, that final piece and how it all went together so I hope you enjoyed that it's a really quick technique probably not all the, the stents or the font writing over the top but I'm sure the the background technique is something you could take and transform into your own piece. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.